So some of you may have noticed a lot of videos are missing. Spoiler alerts, I have moved them to a second channel. This second channel will be the new home of all replays. The original channel, this one, will be used for guides, compilations, all Raven and Tekken related stuff that I make. I have made several announcements leading up to and after the fact that it seems like less than a hundred of you got the demo. Um, I have been making new uploads already, a new season of ATL just ended and GoTech has been tearing shit up and I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to miss out. So in my last video, I brought up using back turn sequences and small moves over the one shot big moves, but I never quite broke that down. I did talk about the big picture concepts and their benefits, but never got into the finer details. This exists because high reward is appealing. Big buttons lead to big damage. The problem is when that's all you know. Entry level play is infamous for this. It's where everyone is constantly throwing out big buttons. The type of matches where it feels like everything is a launcher because people ignore everything else and only use launches and counter launches. And the same idea applies to back turn as well. And the same problem can show up when all you know are the big buttons like back turn on plus two or the back turn throws. Small buttons are low commitment options that are useful for gathering info on your opponent, not throwing your turn rights away, and allow you to play a chip game where you whittle away at your opponent's health. And that's where small Tekken comes in. Whilst it doesn't lead to big damage right away, they help you to prolong an ambiguous situation, help you to switch up your tempo and to mentally tax your opponent. So I'm going to be going over all of these buttons and explaining what they can be used for. And we're going to start with the back turn jabs. Like regular jabs, back turn jabs are useful as checking tools. But what makes them interesting is where they deviate. The normal one jab deals 6 damage, but Raven's back turn 1 deals 10 damage and back turn 2 deals 14. When you see numbers like this, it's the games where I'm trying to incentivize you to use back turn jabs over regular jabs because the payoff is simply higher. Back turn 2 is useful for fishing for a back turn 1 4 counter confirm. This blows off chunks because back turn 2 deals 15 damage on counted and back turn 1 4 deals unscaled damage. On top of that, back turn 2 is also plus 1 on block like a normal jab and also has the same with recovery. So it's easy to see back turn 2's benefits, but what about back turn 1? Why ever use it over back turn 2? Back turn 1 has an 8 frame startup, but the real difference is where back turn 2 keeps Raven in back turn, back turn 1 turns Raven around. Thus, back turn 1 covers back turn 2's weakness in a way. Back turn 2 has fast recovery, but leaves Raven vulnerable if the opponent ducks. Back turn 1's recovery is 3 frames slower, but Raven is less vulnerable afterwards. Also, back turn 1 is only minus 1 on block, so you have a lot of freedom afterwards. Most especially freedom in movement, which back turn 2 does not grant you. And with the back turn options that exit back turn, it's important to think about your next step beforehand. Always keep it simple. Will your opponent press buttons or will they freeze up? After back turn 1, you could use 1-1 one, one as a frame trap, or down 4 or instant while standing 2 for high crush options. You can go for sidestep down back 2 or sidestep into crouch. Or roll back turn if you want to be cheeky. Spin twice if you really want to screw with your opponent's head. And if you've got the execution for it, you can go for instant full crouch house sweep if you really want to overwhelm your opponent. Back turn forward 3 is pretty simple. The only mistake people make with this move is only using it as a safe mid option. However, back turn forward 3 doesn't punish the opponent for ducking that much. And the frames aren't too great either. It's minus 6 on block and only plus 3 on hit. The application of back turn forward 3 isn't to catch people ducking. Its application is to catch people pressing buttons. The reward lies in the counter hit. But we have a lot of other buttons for that. So when should one care about back turn forward 3? When you want to create a more frame type situation. 
especially against down jabs. Back turn forward 3 is useful as a down jab callout when you don't want to risk the back turn 1 plus 2. Similar to back turn jabs, here we have two options, one that exits back turn and one that stays, except this time they are both mids. Both mid pokes with extensions that launch on counter hit. So they both come with mind games that are similar in some ways, but differ in others. Back turn 423 is a delayable mid mid string. Many tend to only use these types of strings for the damage. But back turn 423 becomes more valuable when the opponent respects the second hit which opens up a lot of possibilities for you. Back turn forward 2 on its own is a lot more interesting than back turn forward 2 3. Being plus 6 on hit means a follow up down back 2 or back 2 2 is uninterruptible and even though it's minus 5 on block it's the threat of getting countered launch that keeps the opponent respecting. So this makes back turn forward 2 good filler for back turn sequences with similar decision making behind back turn 1. Back turn forward to also track sidestep left, which is Raven's weak side. Back turn back 2 4 is much safer, on the other hand. It's a mid high string but jails, so less of a commitment when making a read for the counter hit. But back turn back 2 alone can be a bit harder to use than back turn forward 2 alone. Since you don't have the luxury of freedom of movement. Back turn back 2 on its own creates space on block, thus making it useful to create whiff punish opportunities. Another common tactic is to throw out another back turn back 2 or forward 2 to check the opponent for ducking and to throw off back turn down 4 timing. A useful 10 frame high mid string that's 0 on block and comes with extensions. Back turn 344 4 comes with the useful distinction of being one of two of Raven's three hit strings that's actually useful. So you lose nothing if it's blocked, leaving you free to sidestep, frame trap, keep chasing or pressuring the opponent, etc. One trick is to loop back turn 34 into itself, and doing that makes you realize you've opened the door for raw back turn tactics. And of course, if the second hit lands counter hit, you're guaranteed a free 2-4 which leads to obnoxious damage if done at the wall. 